guys and gals, me Mudahar, and <laughs> I think NVIDIA is lying to the people, all right? Marketing BS is marketing BS, but I want to start off with some positivity. Obviously, I think you all know that I'm talking about those brand new NVIDIA graphics cards, and uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, the prices ain't that bad. Now, if one is looking at the prices for an NVIDIA card, I'll be real. <laughs> It ain't looking half bad. Now, the 5090, yes, is a workstation card with 3,400 AI tops. It's coming at $2,000 US, okay? So obviously it's more designed for people that have that crazy money to burn. But I feel like for most people who, you know, are just getting into like, you know, going for a reasonable upgrade, that 5070, ladies and gentlemen, ain't actually half bad for $549. That's actually, from what I believe, reasonably around the same price one would uh, expect from NVIDIA, except slightly lower. NVIDIA cards, it really felt like used to be getting more expensive, but that is actually cheaper than what I thought. Now, why am I calling this video NVIDIA's Lion? Well, because recently in their reveal, I saw Jensen Huang come on stage and talk about some wild things, like a 4090, which is the world's fastest GPU as of today, Something that I have in my computer, right? Like, to, to show you where my computer specifications are, uh, I run, of course, a Ryzen 9 5950X, which is a recently aged CPU, but my 4090 is probably the best in class for raw graphical power on a computer. But of course, a 4090 is now suddenly equivalent to the 5070, which is giving 4090 performance. Now, did I get, did I, did I just get scammed? <laughs> Is this advancement so huge that for literally a fraction of the price, the 5070 is actually beating that big chunky GPU that I have in my system? The answer is no, ladies and gentlemen. The 5070 is not matching the 4090 performance. See, NVIDIA has been doing a lot of AI shillery for the last couple of years, and uh, it's because of some of their massive software enhancements that they finally managed to meet the 4090. As long as you've got all the DLSS there, as long as you've got all the frames being generated, we are sitting at a point where one of their GPUs is now rendering 75% of a video game's frames through itself, through the driver, not through the game itself. It's actually wild when you get into it. Now, when going on to NVIDIA's actual website over here and seeing like, uh, you know, their comparisons, the 4090 is running a game like Cyberpunk 2077 at 106 frames per second. But the 5090 is running it at 240 frames per second. In reality, the half of the frames that you're seeing, at least on this screen, are completely fake. They are generated by the actual driver on the actual computer uh, in something known as DLSS frame generation. And the amount of frames being generated and assists provided has shown that at 4K resolution, running a game like Cyberpunk 2077 with path tracing gives you, with no assists, 28 frames per second on the card. And with all the NVIDIA assists and generation, you can turn that 25 frames per second into 231 frames per second. Now, I might be like, whoa, what kind of arcane black magic shit is this? Uh, and the reality is, this is kind of how NVIDIA has been doing since they've launched ray tracing. Now, for anybody that doesn't remember ray tracing's beginning, uh, I'll, I'll just give you the quick and dirty, okay? NVIDIA launched ray tracing, real-time ray tracing, with the NVIDIA RTX 2000 series. So how this stuff works is there's special hardware dedicated onto the actual GPU, which allows computer games to actually run ray tracing algorithms, ray tracing math, uh, in a real-time capacity. Ray tracing used to be this, you know, thing that was actually quite honestly the holy grail for 3D rendering. Uh, for a lot of game developers, it was not something that was easily achievable by software alone. And until NVIDIA came along, everyone pretty much relegated it to like, you know, pre-rendered CGI imagery or, you know, something that required offline rendering, something that you couldn't do uh, with a video game. So what ray tracing does is effectively simulates light. So for instance, the light that's coming into my room is bouncing off numerous things. It's bouncing off this table, it's bouncing off this mic, it's bouncing off me. And those rays are what NVIDIA's, you know, ray tracing cores are trying to calculate. And once you can calculate that, you can then reflect that in video games with more, you know, realistic lighting, more realistic reflections, more realistic shadows. Now, obviously, the more effects you're trying to calculate in ray tracing, the tougher it becomes. Now, one of the games that came out as a showcase for when the 2000 series launched was Quake RTX. 
Now, I believe this is beyond ray tracing. This is when you go a step further and start doing path tracing, which is where you're calculating multiple bounces and you just have a lot of rays you're working with. It leads to some pretty impressive lighting. Now, when the RTX 2000 series launched, running this game without any assists at all actually gave you a pretty low frame rate. So in order to help with that, NVIDIA also created something known as DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. Now, this technology effectively takes a video game, renders it at a low resolution, and upscales it through artificial intelligence algorithms. And this makes it so that an image that would be typically 720p can look reasonably like 1080p. And there's a pretty good video by a channel known as Two Clicks Philip, who, where he actually goes into the DLSS systems and runs games at such low resolutions. And it's pretty surprising how DLSS is good enough to take a low resolution and make a pretty reasonably clean image out of it. But this algorithm, when it came out, wasn't exactly super impressive. It had its issues. You don't get benefits without costs somewhere. So when you're running a game underneath the resolution of your monitor and you're upscaling it, you're going to come across things like artifacting, like smearing, like ghosting. And honestly, over time, NVIDIA has made this situation better, okay? They have mitigated a lot of the issues that DLSS faced and have actually made it so that nowadays, a DLSS image, if you put two people side by side and made them look at an image right there in front of them, they might not be able to recognize the native image from the DLSS image, right? Depending on what setting is running. So again, in a very short amount of time, we went from running games like Quake RTX to something like Cyberpunk 2077 with full path tracing. So imagine going from rendering a pretty simple PC game all the way to one, of, one game that has tons of materials, tons of complexity in the rendering, honestly a game that is generationally different from Quake, all in a short span of time. Now, in order to get Cyberpunk to run from 25 frames to 231, what NVIDIA is doing here is, again, running the game at a substantially low resolution and then upscaling it through AI. And then, beyond all of it, they've introduced something known as multi-frame generation. Now, frame generation is not new. They introduced it with the 40 series of GPUs. And what it does is basically, let's say you're running a game at 60 frames per second. Now, if you want to run it with frame generation, it can go all the way up to like 120 frames. But what it does is it inputs a frame in between, you know, each real frame. So at some point in the actual graphics card driver, it actually uses onboard hardware like optical flow accelerators and data from the game, where as you're moving forward, for instance, in Cyberpunk, the images you're seeing here, half of the frames in this image are completely generated by the driver. And again, it's a complex way that it does this, and it doesn't come without its issues. There are problems like smearing, the UI can have issues. There are problems with the frame generation, but NVIDIA is trying to fix it. Now, again, one of the realities of all of this is as you generate a frame, you're also increasing the game's latency. Remember, this is not a real frame rate, okay? This is like half of the frames being actually real and the other half being fake. You're gonna have input lag. So when NVIDIA introduced like adding two more frames instead of just one, yeah, now most of the frames generated by a graphics card are effectively fake. What NVIDIA is showing over here, 75% of the frames here are not real frames. So Digital Foundry actually managed to get a look at how this worked on ray tracing overdrive. Now, when it came to input lag, Digital Foundry did in fact find a good average between like all these different options. So for two times frame generation, the average input latency or latency in general was 50.9 milliseconds. That number climbs to 55 when you add the extra frame. And then when you go full on with the, you know, four times frame generation, it's 57 milliseconds. Now, this may seem pretty high, and honestly, you will feel the input lag even with times two, but I will say in actual use cases, it's very playable for a single player game. I wouldn't bring this for something like multiplayer, but that goes without saying. I'm somebody that used to play games like Rainbow Six Siege pretty actively, so I know what a bad input lag is. Now, when I play Cyberpunk 2077 with path tracing and all these effects applied, I have put 200 hours into Cyberpunk, and I have enjoyed my experience on the 4090. But I will never lie to you and tell you that I don't feel some input lag with frame generation. So I have to wonder, again, how bad it's going to be when you add two more frames instead of one. You're going up substantially, and NVIDIA claims they're not going to be input laggy, 
But again, when you're adding in a bunch of fake frames, the possibility for ghosting, artifacting, visual issues, and all of these problems go through the roof. Now, path tracing is incredibly expensive, which is why NVIDIA is generating frames rather than trying to get this out with raw rasterization. So if you look at the top left, uh, that is my frame rate, 22 frames at around 32 by nine ultra wide. So the resolution is 5120 by 1440. Everything is maxed out. It is path traced. And the thing is, it's laggy. I'm not using any assist whatsoever. And this actual image looks very sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Now in the middle here, you'll see what my actual uh, game looks like with DLSS enabled, but no frame generation. So the frame rate improves substantially. And then with frame generation, that frame rate then nearly doubles. And of course, if you want to get really technical, looking close into these shots, I don't think you're going to find much different, you know, with the naked eye, unless you really know what to look for. So even with all these assists, I'm going to let you be the judge of how effective NVIDIA's upscalers are in comparison to traditional rasterization. Now, it's because of a lot of these assists that some people have kind of thought that these graphic cards are a lot cheaper. Uh, because maybe they contain less power to them. And that's not entirely true whatsoever. There is actually an upgrade to traditional rasterization performance, meaning no ray tracing, no assist, no nothing. And it's somewhere around the ballpark of, I would say, 30-ish percent. Somebody on Reddit did a pretty great math for NVIDIA, and they showed that, yes, in some cases, you're looking at like 132% gain. In games where things are CPU lock, like Far Cry 6, uh, you're looking at 27.5% like gains. Uh, and of course, that's what things like ray tracing. Generative AI gets like 100% because, yes, they're putting a lot of their eggs into that basket. But the thing is, overall, you're looking at around 20 to 30% gains off of the 4090 if you're comparing traditional, like, native rendering from 4090 to, like, the 5090 in games like Cyberpunk where you're not putting in any of these, like, generative assists. The moment you start putting in those generative assists, obviously the frame rates are substantially different. Going from 100 frames on a 4090 to, like, 230 frames on a 5090 will be noticeable. Now, again, how much will the input lag affect this? That's yet to be determined until you actually get a mouse in your hands and you're willing to judge for yourself. But for NVIDIA to come out and say the 5070 is somehow equivalent to a 4090 is just marketing bullshit. And I'm sorry, I'm tired of anybody saying that it actually isn't. One of the other things that I kind of saw in regards to some of these cards were things like VRAM. Now, when you're looking at the VRAM for a card, VRAM is pretty important because, you know, as long as you are increasing your resolutions and you're filling in more, you know, higher resolution textures, you're going to need a lot more of that VRAM. And the 5070 comes with 12 gigabytes, which seems surprisingly low. And the reason I say it is because, honestly, we're at a point where a lot of games are going through the roof with their visual requirements. Even 16 gigabytes still doesn't seem like enough of a buffer zone for games that are slowly creeping up. Now, obviously, if you go to the 5090, it's 32 gigs of memory, but this is like a really advanced card for, again, more professional-grade users. The average gamers are probably going to be sitting around these first three cards. Again, I like to talk about this from a mid-range gaming PC perspective. Not everyone has the money for, like, a 5090. So when you're looking at things like VRAM, for instance, and memory bandwidth, it's pretty impressive, all right? But again, that VRAM amount has me a little worried. And NVIDIA is doing a bunch of things with AI and compression techniques to make sure that that, you know, amount of VRAM works. And maybe they've got their head on right, maybe they've got the answers, but it's still something that I have a bit of a worry about. And again, it really shows me why these cards are priced pretty well. Again, NVIDIA is a company out to make money. And again, I do believe these cards are designed to not be loss leaders because at the end of the day, I don't think NVIDIA really believes they're in competition with any of their actual competitors like AMD or Intel because none of those cards are matching to the same level that NVIDIA is. There's a reason why people are buying NVIDIA cards. You may not like NVIDIA, but there's a reason why their cards are substantially at the top of their game. 
There's a lot of positives and there's a lot of negatives that I find with this GPU release, but one of the things that does kind of hit me is the advertising. I don't believe that NVIDIA is releasing 4090 performance on a 5070. And I think the fact that we're kind of pushing in for AI, we're pushing in for, again, a lot of these assistive models to come and up the frame rate, uh, instead of actually increasing it, you know, in a raw manner is something that I feel like should be a question that is asked. You know, we're getting to a point where ray tracing and path tracing in video games is being introduced incredibly aggressively. And at the rate that this new level of graphical technology is coming out, NVIDIA is kind of going out of their way to discover assistive tools, right? Because at the end of the day, going from something like Quake RTX all the way to something like Cyberpunk 2077 and all the future games that come out down the road, NVIDIA is going to have to keep finding ways to generate frames because trying to render this stuff raw is going to make these graphic cards jump from actual affordable prices, like $549, all the way to actually $2,000, if we're trying to achieve the same level of frame rate without any of these assists. But yeah, we are in a world where it's kind of funny if you really think about it. Uh, you know, I, 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 one of my favorite like communities on the internet is Fuck TAA where we talk about like, again, <laughs> the idea of TAA as an anti-aliasing method that is traditionally pretty decent in some cases, but if you start to look beyond the cracks, images become blurrier. It's wild when you play games from 10 years ago and you play them at native resolutions and you look at, they feel like new games because they look so sharp. But with NVIDIA's tools and a lot of these new upscalers and frame generators, we went from having crystal clear sharp frames all the way to now being used to looking at ghosting, artifacting, input lag is now you know going higher as we're generating more and more frames. And ultimately, I think at some point, the returns are really going to start diminishing pretty heavily across the board for this kind of stuff. Now, to be fair, do I recommend you get the 50 series? There's only one way I'd recommend it. Probably if you're upgrading from like a 2000 series card. I still think looking at all of this, a 30 series card is still good enough. Most games are still gonna be fine with a 30 series card. Um, unless you're upgrading from like literally nothing or a 2000 series, the 50 series makes sense. And the reason I'm probably so pessimistic is because I am at a 4090. So for me, a 5090, while yes, the new software looks impressive, uh, it's not worth paying $2,000 for a 20 to 30% increase in raw performance. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to talk about this stuff because again, I am a video gamer. I am a PC guy. I talk about PC stuff. And uh, hopefully, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I do want to give you my real, honest facts and honest like understanding of the situation. Uh, I'm not going to be an NVIDIA shill just for the sake of being an NVIDIA shill. I like NVIDIA. I do. But I think the way that this has kind of been billed is definitely... <laughs> we're definitely hyping up the software more than we are really the hardware in the situation. And again... That's really up to anybody. If, you, if you're somebody that is all in this frame generation world, then this is a great card for you. But I think a real question has to be asked going forward into, you know, what is in a video game frame anymore? Is it even actually the video game or is it some AI generated stuff from the actual graphic driver? Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.